Thanks for staying with us with the South African Morning. While well, President Sir Ramaphosa says government will be looking to ease policies to help the cannabis sectors grow in South Africa, he highlighted that South Africans have already been farming cannabis. So according to the World Health Organization, as South Africa is the third largest illegal cannabis producer in the world. So let's get reaction now from Africa Cannabis Advisory Group CEO, Smusi Sokaba. Smusi, so always a pleasure speaking to you. I mean, during the State of the Nation address, President Sir Ramaphosa obviously made mention of a need to review some of these policies as well as regulatory frameworks around uh, the number of processes involved in the cannabis industry. Now, from the conversations that we've always had regarding the sector of industry, one thing that has become very pertinent is that it is very expensive. The process of actually acquiring this license is a a very expensive, tedious one that excludes a significant portion of the market. Good morning, Faith. Thank you so much for uh, having me on the show today and good morning to your viewers. Um, so you, you hit the nail on the head. I, I think one of the major challenges with uh, the, the current uh, framework of the legal cannabis industry in South Africa is the fact that um, millions of rands are required to start a business and um, an extreme high level of technical skills is required to really get off the ground. Now, the reason for that is because the government has been taken, taking a, a staged approach in terms of legalizing the industry, and medical cannabis has been the first real commercial uh, way in which individuals can can get into to the industry. Um, unfortunately, the the challenge is that there are really no. Um, funding um, sources available. So for example, if you are an entrepreneur and you you know do have the skills, the team and so forth, uh, there's little to no capital available uh, to sort of be able to, to get into the industry unless you obviously uh, have got money or resources already. But I think one thing to consider when sort of looking at the dynamic of, of uh, our industry is that the introduction of industrial hemp is also the second sort of regulated uh, cannabis uh, activity, which is growing um, outdoors and growing at scale, which is a significantly lower entry point in terms of capital uh, versus your medical cannabis. So I think over time, there will be a tweaks to, uh, to the legislation and regulatory framework to make this industry more accessible. And I think there will be an effort to create a uh, framework for individuals in South African individuals and small businesses to cultivate and, and provide cannabis to, to the local supply chain. Where does the significant um, sector of industries concentrate actually lie? So when we're looking at the sector of industry in the South, the cannabis industry, whose hands is it at? Sure. So it currently um, is pretty much dominated by uh, individuals and groups that have got sufficient capital to to get up and running. Um, as we touched on, to, to set up a cannabis operation, you're looking at a minimum of, of just even getting a license of roughly 5 million, but you're probably looking at a budget of, of between 20 and 50 million to actually uh, have a proper significant uh, uh, operation. Now, the, um, the president's words were encouraging because it does seem that um, um, the government uh, established uh, investment vehicles will begin to support uh, this industry in the way of um, uh, capital. Um, and should the um, government also uh, keep to their word, uh, rural communities, indigenous growers and individual growers will have a means uh, to commercially sell, sell cannabis in South Africa in the future. Yeah, I mean, we're speaking here about even the, the cannabis uh, uh, for private uh, purpose bill that is uh, currently making its way through Parliament, obviously following the introduction in September 2020. But we know that when it comes to these bills as well, it's about implementation of the bill and how exactly will it manifest itself in the home and how does it trickle down to the small enterprise that wants to get its teeth into the sector of industry. One such, for example, right now, many would say that those are, who would love to open a small cannabis business are limited. Right. So because of the uh, illegalities as well as the, you know, the regulations around it. So until when will those uh, individuals be allowed to even play ball within the cannabis sector of industry? As you're saying right now, it rests and lies in the hands of those that have got the capital for it. But those small businesses, which may be even black owned small businesses, are still left out in the cold. How long do you think it will actually possibly take for us to undo uh, some of those existing realities? 
Um, sure. So I think this has been one of the you know uh, biggest frustrations with sort of the process that government has taken in terms of formalizing legislation. You know, even when we look at the Cannabis for Private Purposes bill, um, one of the big disappointments uh, in the bill was that it um, it it was a um, uh, a judgment passed down by the Constitutional Court from the 2008 ruling around the, the, the cultivation and consumption of cannabis in the private space. Um, the expectation from the industry was that it would also allow for commercial uh, cultivation, trade, and um, uh, and and sale of cannabis by more, smaller businesses and uh, and individuals and so forth. But it it really it literally just um, went as far as it needed to go in order to satisfy. Um, um, Judge Zondo's um, uh, ruling. Now, the, the the main issue with that is that it 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 keeps kicking the can down the road. So once the private for, uh, cannabis for private purposes bill gets passed, which will take time, then it seems the government will then look at uh, a, a new sort of um, a piece of legislation that will uh, allow small as hold farmers, individuals, rural communities to be able to formally participate in the in the sector. And that's, I think, the big disappointment here is that processes that, um, you know, should be taking uh, maybe a year or 18 months are taking two, three, four, five years. Um, and in the state that South Africa is in today, we desperately need to empower as many people as possible uh, to, to pull themselves out of poverty. Um, and so we're hoping that the president's um, um, focus on cannabis and hemp uh, at SONA is uh, is one where this time it will be met with um, urgency so that uh, we can begin to really mobilize this industry and and, uh, and and fulfill its full potential for for the people of South Africa. I hear you on that high note. We'll leave it there. This is Kaba, CEO of the Africa Cannabis Advisory Group. Thank you very much.